What's going on, guys and gals? Welcome back to another episode of Reading Rainbow Six Reddit. I'm Kendall, and this is Gavin, and today we're going to be talking about the rest of the patch notes for Operation Void Edge. We're going to be talking about the second half of the patch notes, and we're going to be skipping over the operation details for Ayana, Oryx, and the Oregon Rework. For those of you that are interested, we covered that in the last video. So check it out. Check it out. So what we're looking at right now is the Ubisoft webpage. So this is like the most raw kind of content you're going to have. This is directly from Ubisoft, so these are all going to be pretty spot on. So we're going to skip over all this fun stuff. I'm not going to see Harry, Ayana, or Oryx, or even the Oregon rework. We're hopping right into some of this good stuff. So this is the first thing, and this is probably one of the most exciting things that we're going to be seeing in uh, the new patch, is uh, barricade debris consistency. So this is something that everyone's been talking about and complaining about basically since the game came out. Uh, for me, as someone who loves to spawn peak, this has been probably one of the biggest hassles of my entire life. So, go, I'll just read it off real quick. One of the more impactful changes to note this season is how we approach the behavior of barricade debris. Previously, when partially breaking barricades, there would be a piece of debris that could get stuck in the remainder of the barricade. Since this was done client side, it could put a player at a significant advantage towards their opponent due to the line of sight being blocked for one player but not the other. To avoid the situation and the frustration that comes with it, partially breaking a barricade with a weapon or melee hit will now create a much smaller debris. Additionally, when completely destroying a barricade, the behavior of the debris is improved to minimize occlusion caused by stacked debris on the top of window sills and the base of door frames. That was a lot to say, but basically from what I've seen from the patch notes, because when it says small debris, it basically means that the debris is basically evaporated. It, it just it doesn't exist from the game, which is nice. I mean, it's, it's wonderful for me because I don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, it's not the situation. I don't think it's what Ubisoft wanted to have to fix it. I think they ideally just wanted to fix it correctly, but they've been trying to fix it for years now. And so I think this is probably the fastest, easiest way to appease... Uh, the player base. So this is one of the big things I'm excited about and it's just gonna make gameplay a lot more a lot more clean. I'm excited for it as well. I don't normally spawn peek myself. Prefer to kind of lie and wait around a corner where attackers might be coming in. But I think that the debris consistency will be satisfying for players on both sides of play as well. I know that that's been a big thing for me on the attacking side, trying to get a peek into objective and not being able to see in at all. Up next we have a change to the attacker's drone spawn. I won't read it word for word, but basically the way that it's going to work now is that drones are going to spawn on the side that the attacker has preferred, which is where they're going to be spawning. So you're going to be a little more consistent with where you're droning from. You won't say pick alley on bank and then get something all the way over on jewelry. Your drone will spawn closer to where you spawn so that you have a better idea of where you're going and what your route is going to look like when you enter. And the community is a little bit kind of, I mean, it's kind of shaken up by it. It's it's interesting because a lot of players are worried that by choosing where you're just going to spawn and having your drone spawn there, you know, three drones coming from one common drone hole, it's going to give their position away to the defender. I think it's nuanced. I mean, I, people are worried. I think pro players are particularly worried. Uh, but if anything, there might be something in the meta for this in particular, but I don't think it's going to be too game-changing. I think it's going to be more convenient, to, especially to more casual gamers, than it is to the pro players. Besides this, I mean, you can always change where you choose to spawn from, but, you know, pro players know that too, so I think it's a good change, more convenient, but I don't think the community should be worried as much as, they, as they're getting worried for it. All right, so uh, we're getting some player hub changes. Um, gonna be honest, this seems to happen every season, so I think it looks fine. It looks, I guess, cleaner than the new one, but we'll really find out if it's more convenient or not. I know a lot of people were, didn't really like this season's change, uh, and particularly with the operator section one, just made it a little bit more inconvenient to get to operators quickly. I think this is fine, especially with some of the later changes that we'll be going over. Something that's disappointing for a couple of players in our own squad, and for players throughout the game are the lesion and twitch changes. These have been kind of controversial in many ways uh, regarding the changes to these ops because these are two ops that 
the community is very divided about. So I'll be covering the lesion changes and I'll let Gavin cover the Twitch changes that are happening. Uh, lesion is now losing his 10 initial damage from a goo mine and the tick damage has gone up from 4 to 6. Additionally, he's losing the ability to see his goo mines through walls and instead can only see them through direct line of sight from about, I think in the test server they said about 8 meters away, which is not very far, but it does still give him a good line of sight to those goo mines. And I think that while as a lesion uh, main myself, these changes are a bit sad for me. It's going to force Legion mains to play a little more like Ubisoft would want Legion to be played. Right now he's being played uh, much like how I play him as a roamer, uh, looking for those goo mines to go off and tracking people down where they enter. And I think that they'd rather have him be played as an anchor where he can keep eye on his, uh, his goo mines from a line of sight and where it will be much more punishing for attackers to have to pull out the goo mines, forcing them to choose between uh, potentially putting themselves at risk of getting shot by pulling them out immediately or taking that increased tick damage. Yeah, and that being said, he's not losing a whole lot of uh, playability or utility because he's st one of the main reasons to play him, and particularly in ranked, is uh, having a goo mine will prevent being able to uh, place the diffuser so he'll still, I mean, I think you're right. He's going to be the new meta for the Legion. He's not going to be roaming. He's going to be really anchored. And he's going to be trying to prevent any diffusion. Kind of used to seeing. That being said, uh, this is kind of going on with Ubisoft's kind of changing the meta. I mean, we've seen a lot of changes very rapidly, but they're trying to, like, with Oryx, they're trying to change the meta instead of being so trap-based to being... I would say more roamer friendly or combatant based and this is certainly helping as Legion I would argue as right now is probably the strongest trap operator in the game. This is still going to make him, he'll still be very strong, he just won't be ridiculously strong. But that being said, Twitch is also getting uh, some nerfs but maybe even a buff, it's kind of confusing. In addition to her having a F2 kind of recoil nerf where it's going to be a lot harder to control. Her drones are getting another nerf, so this is the second big one, but it's also possibly a buff. Here's here's the rundown. So Twitch's drone is now going to start with three shocks. Uh, from there, instead of just running out and you know being basically uh, worse than normal drone, they can recharge over time. Every 30 seconds, she gets a new shock, and it should stack at around five. So while she now does have unlimited shocks, you have to wait for them to recharge and you don't have them initially all at the beginning of the round. Which, I, this appeases me personally, even though I don't play Twitch that often, I'm just barely getting into her. I used to play her a lot when she had 15 shocks before and they did like a ton of damage and oh man, that was great. But I think this is, this is kind of bringing me back to what I really liked about Twitch, which is being able to take out more than five things of utility. And also, now that the damage is only down to one, she can only take out certain things. Uh, for example, I believe the Jaeger's ADS has two health, so it'll take two shocks now to destroy those, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the kind of gameplay that we see. Also, she can't destroy friendly drones anymore, because those have more than one health. I guess that's kind of a buff, but also a really good nerf. Let us know what you feel about it, because personally, for me, I think it's really balanced. I, like, I, I think I'm going to like where she's at, but I know some of our Twitch players are very offended but also very happy so it's, it's a really divided community let us know all right of course the next thing that we have to talk about is the ash elite uh, this is something that the community's actually been really liking uh, it's been inspiring a lot more posts mainly around tachanka so he can be the guy from team fortress or you know, doom slayer doom Slay <laughs> we've seen uh possible elites for thatcher there's been a lot of discussion yeah. about crossover elites within the Rainbow Six universe. Yeah, and I think it's very possible, specifically if it is a Ubisoft game, so I'd be happy to see them. They're, they're fun, and they're better than a lot of the other elites, <laughs> but this one is, has been driving the community. Everyone really likes it, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a pretty big fan. But this being said, this is Ash's, what, third This elite? is Ash's third elite. If we want to get really technical, second, because the first two were... Similar, they were just reskins. Going to be interesting to see now that we're getting operators with multiple elites starting to come out. Yeah, especially since it was leaked before, saying it was a possibility. Now it's really happening. 
So hopefully we'll get some some better elites coming up for not so pretty ones. But we'll find out. We'll see. I'm happy with this one. So the, one of the next things that's happening is we're having an operator price decrease. This isn't just like a season. This is particular operators that I guess you'd be determined to be cheaper. So we got Lion, Gridlock, Mira, Jackal, Finca, and Mozzie. So it looks like we have their prices right here. Uh, Finca's is like 15 uh, just 15 right now. Just kidding. That's 15,000 right now. So you still have to grind out, but at least it's cheaper and it's not such a grind. So check those out. You'll be excited if you're looking to buy them if you haven't already. But here's what I'm excited for. So these are the new weapon skins that we'll be getting. This is something me and Ken have been talking about because we only really want to buy one. Well, I want to buy all of them, but I can only afford to buy one. Uh, what's nice about this one, so Kendall, go ahead and explain this. You explained these really, really well earlier. So these are the new weapon skins for this season, and we're really excited. These look like they're going to be much better seasonal weapon skins than in previous seasons that we've had. The first one up on the list reflects Oryx's background and kind of his whole style as a character. We've got leather, we've got engraved metal, slap a beard on it, and I think that we could definitely see uh, a good reflection of Oryx in it. In all seriousness, though, it is indicative of traditional weaponry uh, from Oryx's home country of Jordan, which we can see down below in the descriptions. The second weapon skin that we can see up here on the list is actually indicative of Ayana's background from Finland. And this one is actually patterned after the wooden shoes that are popular in Finland. It's a clean looking weapon skin. It's got wooden upholstery. Almost looks like it's got the Ubisoft logo on it. And it's also got that sick Tentacion logo. Exactly, the triple X. So this one's looking super fresh. I like it a lot. It's going to be tough for me to decide which one I want. I think I'm going to have to choose between those two after I've seen them on a couple weapons. Yeah, but this third one, uh, it's, it's what, fish scales? Yes. So this one's. it says it right here. I just want to look down at it to be sure. So the third one is the... The Colorful River Scale. So that's the technical name. It's inspired by the Dragon Boat Festivals. I don't I don't know exactly which Dragon Boat Festivals it is. We do have some, what it looks like, some kanji right here. I'm not entirely sure. But it looks, it looks pretty fresh. I mean, you got this nice silver barrel, nice blue scales. I think they look great. I think all three of these weapons look great. But I'm excited to see those. I'll probably purchase the Tentacion one. But yeah, so we got that going on. And then let's see, year five season pass. One thing that people have been kind of going on about in the Reddit is the for the year five season pass, there's only going to be six operators. But like we saw in the Invitational, there's going to be a lot of reworks. I mean, we were discussing this a little bit last time. So Tachanka's getting a rework. Castle's getting a rework. Those are confirmed. I believe it's leaked that even Glass is getting a rework too. I mean, this season uh, for... Year five, the first season, we're getting the recruit rework, which I think is coming up a little bit later. Honestly, still get the year five season pass just because it's going to offer a lot. I'm excited, but we'll see. All right, so yeah, player behavior. This is mostly just kind of for PC uh, because they had some problems with this earlier this year where they just decided to take out player chat basically for everyone. Uh, so what's happening now, as far as I know, is you can kind of have your own settings and choose if you want to just talk to your team only or if you want to allow cross chat, that way you don't have to deal with abusive, you know, toxic people in Rainbow. Uh, it says it right here, our data consistently shows that a very high percentage of abusive chat comes from cross chat, so that is not team chat. So you can turn off all of it, you can deal with it now, really convenient, especially if you're just wanting a casual game you don't want to get yelled at. So thank you, UB, for finding a good, good solution for this. And as people are going to be happy to find out, there's been a lot of stuff in the subreddit about levers, throwers, uh, team killers, a lot of toxicity within ranked and unranked. Ubisoft is now reestablishing the escalation abandon penalty for unranked and ranked to kind of take care of those who leave or abandon their ranked and unranked matches, kind of lobby shopping for good matches. Uh, they're going to find that those escalations are going to be much more severe and they could wind up with a permanent ban. Okay, so here's the, some of the balancing. So this is this is, uh, this is where a bunch of the crazy stuff comes in. So we've got the recruit rework. This is what I was talking about earlier. So basically instead of having this really large menu of recruit where you can just kind of peruse all the CTUs except for the DLC ones and you can pick your weapons 
and your utilities from that, from those CTUs specifically, you're going to have the ability to choose particular operators with pre-made weapon sets. Uh, you can choose the uh, gadgets more, but the weapons will also come with attachments. This is something that you couldn't have on recruit. It's one of the big downsides. I think now there's only three that you can choose from for attack and two from defense. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I didn't really say what ones they have, but I mean we've seen a lot of them, a lot of gameplay in the test servers. For attack, there's going to be Capitals LMG. There's going to be Dukkha Bay's EBR, and there's also going to be the L85. So some classic guns. None have a kind. They all have uh, holographic uh, or less zoom than that. So get ready for that. You're not going to really enjoy that if you prefer ACOG. But you get to choose a lot of gadgets. You can have frags or claymores, I believe, and the rest is up to you. So a lot of playability there. And defense, you still get the beautiful M870. Thank, thank you, you be forgiving me at least one thing. Uh, so you can still choose between the M870 or the MP5. And then uh, the Super Shorty, is, I think, is one of the big uh, weapons you can choose from or these other shotguns or pistols. So it, it's great. You can have a little bit of customization, but not much. Certainly not as much as you had before, but like I said, you get attachments to compensate. A lot of people, the community really seems to be enjoying it. I mean, I'm upset because I can't M870 rush anymore, but let us know what you think about it. It's really interesting that they would choose to re rework recruit at all over all the other operators, and yet we have to receive an elite skin for it. So keep your eyes peeled. You get us that elite, and we'll be quite happy. <laughs> Moving on, uh, one of the most interesting reworks of this season is Castle's rework that they're doing. Not a full rework, but more of a buff for right now. Uh, they're going to be replacing his M45 and giving him the Super Shorty secondary shotgun for utility. Now, as a castle snob myself, <laughs> I don't think that this is going to be enough to incentivize people to play him. I don't. And while castle isn't the strongest operator in the game, nor is he necessarily the most fun to play, I don't think that giving him more utility with the secondary shotgun like the Super Shorty is going to incentivize players to play him. I think that what he needs is a full rework of his gadget to convince players that he's worth bringing to the team. Especially with the confusion with new players. He's a simple op to play, but he takes a lot of skill to use well. Uh, you don't want to be just barricading yourself in the objective, and that's what seems to be the case a lot of the time and what causes such anger for people with, with Castle is the fact that castle players, especially new players, will just barricade whatever is there. Random windows, doorways, heaven forbid the doorway to objective most of the time. <laughs> um, I think he needs a full rework. What do you think? I agree. And I think they confirmed it, so I really hope that that really happens, and I hope it happens soon. Uh, I'm still excited for the Tachanka rework a little bit more, but I, I think castle would need a rework. And plus, having the super shorty, the M1014 already sees very little gameplay. Maybe some players use it with Pulse, but not really. Like, let's be honest. So this is going to be pushing a lot of players to switch. Anyone that used the M1014 for utility, you're going to switch to the UMP, and you're going to have them as a super shorty in the secondary. The M1014 is going to be one of the guns that disappears. So maybe we'll have it as another recycled weapon on a future operator, but who knows? It's a scarce weapon to see but it's going to become even more scarce now. So the next things that we're kind of seeing are kind of more nuanced. Uh, well, this is what I'm pretty excited about. Frost is getting a holographic. It's not only that, but it's a really new holographic. It's not the standard one you see. So it looks really fresh, really tasty. I'm excited to see it, but not really going to change a whole lot. Anyway, so then Goyo, this one's really nuanced. Uh, basically, unless you're trolling, you're not going to really ever be able to use this. But falling onto a, a Vulcan uh, will cause it to collapse instead of exploding. I don't know if Goyle will get the Vulcan back after, but IQ, so when uh, objectives such as bomb or biohazard containers are hidden until after the uh, prep phase, IQ can use them, her detection thing, and she can find them, her specter, and she can find them. Uh, so this is something that I think has been in the game before, it might have disappeared, but it's still useful nonetheless, I'm happy to see IQ have some more more utility than she already has. We've already talked about the lesion and the twitch reworks, uh, so now we're going to get into a couple of exciting pieces of news that have kind of been floating around the subreddit, one involving DMRs and one involving Warden. 
Uh, Warden is getting a change to his gadget that a lot of people have been pining for for a long time since he came out. And that's going to be that his gadget will change to reflect more closely something like Noak's gadget or Vigil's gadget, where it'll run on a cooldown system where he can stop at any time and start at any time after a certain threshold. I believe it says 20% left of his charge. This allows Warden, I think, to be a little more competitive and a little more useful where he doesn't have to fully expend his charge after being flashed and he doesn't have to wait for it to fully recharge in order to bring it back up. I know Gavin is definitely a big Warden man, uh, so <laughs> you've got to be excited about that. I, I am. And what's interesting now is because, I mean, there's no real meta against Warden. He's already really weak. So hopefully this will change it so that way if you see there's a Warden in the room, you have three flashbangs. You're going to have to time him out really well to hopefully be able to try and get Warden once flashed. Otherwise, I think you can, if you time it really well, you should be able to prevent all three flashes. So that would be cool if there's a meta for Warden because that means that you're doing something right if there's a meta against an operator. So that's exciting. It's new. It's fresh. It's going to be nice. The next one is something that I'm really excited about. The whole community seems really excited about. It's that DMRs can now destroy barricades, hatches, and soft surfaces way easily. I think it takes five shots to destroy a hatch from a DMR now. And this can be, I think, basically anywhere as long as it's not in the same bullet hole. So that's crazy. So it allows for a lot more mobility. It's pushing kind of the meta to switch from automatic weapons to DMRs because now you have this utility. Uh, like, so basically instead of having to like choose Buck and use his uh, skeleton key or have to have an operator that has a secondary as a shotgun, you can open up these hatches way more easily. You're going to have a lot more movement. This is going to be interesting to see with Oryx now being around the map and being able to move around so easily. But I think another thing that's kind of interesting, and it's kind of a big nerf, I guess, if you can really nerf this operator anymore, would be to Glass, who one of the special things about him is he could destroy these soft walls or barricades or hatches with three bullets. But now basically any operator can do that as long as they have a DMR with five. So sorry, Glass, you already have very little gameplay. Exciting news for everyone else, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, another thing that's happening, this is, I, I want to see this because I'm a Mira main and possibly a Goyo main because I love the vector so much. It's getting a damage increase only by, I think, 2% or 2 damage, but that's a lot. It's a lot. For the, how fast that thing fires, it's going to be great, and I'm excited to see that coming into the game. The last thing that we're seeing as far as changes in the operator loadouts is going to be a transition to more frag grenades on attack and this is I think very exciting and very indicative about what we're looking to see in the future as far as the new operations that are coming out not necessarily void edge but some of the operations that haven't come out this year might be seeing some some shift in meta uh, so what we're looking at right now is that Dekebi is going to be losing her frag grenades in place of stuns a lot of disappointed Dekebi fans out there and I think that the changes just to kind of bring her back in line with more more of what Ubisoft wanted her to be. They changed her, they didn't like it, and now they're bringing it back. A lot of people started banning Dokebe because she was so powerful. This is basically going to make it so that way she's not on that ban matrix as hard. I think it's going to go back to banning Jackal and who else gets banned on attack. It's been a while. She always seems to be banned now. Uh, I don't know. Jackal seems like, Jackal. <laughs> the, for the most part, Blitz, if you're a memer now. Uh. Uh, yeah, so that's one of the crazy things that's happening. Uh, but yeah, who else, what, who else is losing frags? Nobody else is losing frags, but we're actually seeing Maverick, Nook, and Ying gaining frags in places of stuns and both claymores respectively for those operators. Now that's going to be interesting. I think that Ubisoft is realizing that frags are a big incentive for players to play operators that have a low win delta or a low play delta. And they're trying to kind of compensate for that by giving those operators frags in order to improve team utility. You can kill operators, you can burn ADSs. If you're skilled with them, you can even open up castle barricades or hatches with them. Yeah. So frags are, are really something that's important, and I'm excited to see that uh, some of our squad's fan favorites, like Nook and Ying, are getting some a, a bit of a buff with the frags. And it's also exciting, too, because as we were talking about earlier, with the shift in the meta, 
the fact that we're getting more of perhaps one of the best utilities on attack, those frag grenades, is indicative that we might start seeing a lot more operators with destructible gadgets. Operators like Goyo, operators that rely on things like shields, deployables, or deployables frost mats, those kinds of traps, or possibly even area denial. Yeah, so this is going to be interesting. Like I said, we're kind of shifting the meta from trap ops. The frags are going to help get rid of those. You know, having all these open holes and hatches is certainly going to be a benefit for frags. A lot more uh, Kobe shots I will be able to see, but a lot of stuff changing. This is another thing that's kind of happening uh, as far as game balancing. We're seeing some shrapnel damage. So this is really nuanced. You're probably never going to see this, but now there's shrapnel. As long as uh, the enemy player is on the other side of a soft wall. Shrapnel will now shoot through the wall. It'll be about five small holes. It doesn't really do much. It'll deal damage now to the attacker or defender on the other side of the soft wall. But also, it'll kind of basically just reveal where they were when they got hit by it. So you can blast the wall, but it shouldn't change the game too much. But I know they've been having some problems with it. We'll see how it turns out. This is something, I think it's mainly just for console players, where now, once you... So you're not finished droning or someone's hunting your drone during the prep phase, instead of immediately having to hop off of it, you can now go into your settings, adjust it, and make it so that you don't have to. You can keep droning out and you manually have to exit out of it. So that'll be nice for some players. I don't, I don't really care, but we'll see how it turns out. I think it'll be fine. It's a good change, good to have options that, uh, for players that you know, utilize this. And as far as game health, players are now basically just going to be notified if they've been penalized for something uh, or they have an action taken against them so I guess that's nice so if you're toxic I guess in game you can be more toxic so we'll we'll <laughs> see how that goes because you know you get it reported against you you're like oh yeah we'll all report you so we'll see how that is player loadouts so this is something that I think Yubi's kind of talking about for uh, for kind of more like the pro players so that you can kind of have these custom loadouts and then if you want to switch it depending on the map you don't have to go in and change particular attachments you just change the custom loadout. It's kind of like how Call of Duty has it. So it's going to be more for pro players, players that actually actively change their loadouts bef between matches and rounds. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I'm, I think it's a great change. And also, night maps are basically just being removed. So no more night maps. Get rid of them. The last thing that we have to talk about within this main patch is just the fact that operator bios, for those that are interested in reading them, are going to be updated. We're going to be seeing a lot of year one, year two, and a couple of year three operators that are getting updates and changes to their bios. As someone who likes to read them myself, I think it's exciting to see the lore and universe of Rainbow Six expanded on and get to become more familiar with the operators that we know and love. Instead of just seeing them as tools, it feels rewarding and fun to be able to see them as people that you're playing as. Yeah. Instead of just being a multiplayer game, there's narrative. Even though it's just indirect narrative the lore is still wonderful please read it still a better story than destiny alrighty guys so that's everything that's been in the patch notes it's a long video and hopefully your opinions align with us because we've been discussing them for a long time there's plenty to read there's plenty to learn about so check them out for yourselves this is just a brief rundown and let us know what you're excited about in the next patch there's plenty to be talking about and plenty to be excited so let us know in the comments like subscribe and let us know because we're still here, so. Absolutely. We'll see you guys next time.